Are you excited to learn a little bit about some science and a little bit about some science fiction? Yeah, you are. All right. So I'm really excited to be here. We're going to talk about why having women STEM characters in film and television is so important. So let's get the conversation started. Hello, nerds. You're sitting down with Dr. Aaron McDonald, and this is Generally Nerdy. She is the coolest chick in the world, and I'm super psyched to be getting to know her for reals. That's all caps with multiple exclamation points. She is one of the sharpest, neatest human beings on the planet and turned my nieces on to science. Thank you. That is one heck of an introduction. <laughs> also. My background's in astrophysics. I did my doctorate with the LIGO collaboration, searching for gravitational waves. But I didn't necessarily want to be a professor. I liked doing research, but it was hard. It was a hard life. You typically have contracts for a couple years, and you move to different research universities. And I liked this stuff. It was cool, but it wasn't cool enough for how much it was you know, required of my life. I had a lot of hobbies. Um, and I just wasn't able to find the time to really devote to what I wanted. So while I was studying my, um, my PhD, I was procrastinating and decided to see if I could calculate how warp drive worked because I was a big Star Trek fan and I was getting a degree in general relativity. So I did, as one does, <laughs> um, started speaking at conventions on the science of science fiction. I just found being able to combine my passion for science fiction and my passion for teaching was kind of my happiest place. And uh, now I work as an aerospace engineer and I also work as a consultant, um, helping writers with their science fiction, as well as coming to these and uh, teaching about the science behind science fiction. And sure. I also get the question, you know, how did you have mentors? Like, what was your process of becoming a scientist? Um, for me, it was uh, Dana Scully did her undergraduate degree in astrophysics. She wrote her undergraduate, and this is the fictional character, right, right, right. <laughs> and wrote her undergraduate thesis on Einstein's twin paradox theory. And I had never heard of astrophysics until I found that out, that that was just a big word. You know, Neil deGrasse Tyson had, wasn't a thing. And, right. and so um, that stuck in my mind as something I would want to do. Men and women in STEM were shown to be equally competent at their job. So it wasn't like, oh, the women don't know how to do it. It was, yeah. Right, it is interesting, because I think that when they do take the time to have female STEM characters, they aren't portrayed as incompetent. Right. They, they are good at their job. And I do think, I think anecdotally, we're starting to see more too, that there tends, there's starting to be more parity in the biology and medicine field than in the physics world. And I'm sure that that has something to do with it as yes. well. Yeah. Hey everyone, welcome to another episode of Dr. Aaron Explains the Universe. So this episode we're going to be exploring the idea of gravitational time dilation. In this one we're going to be talking about something from Star Trek Discovery, so if you're avoiding spoilers I'm going to be talking about the mid-season finale of season one, so get out now. Hey everyone, welcome to another episode of Dr. Aaron Explains the Universe. Now this one we're just going to geek out about some sci-fi. So we're going to be talking about the verse in Firefly. In of mine there was a girl who came up and she just said, this is great, I get to meet a real scientist and I always wanted to be a scientist. And, and you know, if people are able to see themselves in me or kids get excited about maybe becoming a scientist because they see a woman with tattoos and like, <laughs> I like tattoos and I like science and maybe I could do that one day. That's really my big reward. 